is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires, right on our strength, and by Grunt Style. Now, with all the news from NASCAR Touring, local and international series racing, here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. Welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast for Wednesday, July 11th, 2018, here on the Motor Racing Network. Kyle Rickey here in Killingly, Connecticut, joined by Hannah Newhouse, who has returned to our studios in Concord, North Carolina. And Hannah, uh, well, we missed you last week. However, Andy Seiss did a great job filling in uh, while you were away. Yeah, I actually uh, made a point to, uh, you know, judge him on his skills in the studio. <laughs> I was like, if you're going to take, you know, my place, you got a lot of, you got a lot to live up to. But uh, no, Andy did a great job, and I appreciate him coming in and uh, taking the spot while I was hanging out with some family out on the West Coast in Idaho. So it's good to be back, though, no doubt. Hanging out with your family at the racetrack as well. Uh, a lot to talk about from racing this past weekend, but let's start by talking about your Pro Truck Series race at your home racetrack, Meridian Speedway in Idaho. Nice third place finish for you as uh, I was able to to catch it uh, while at another event watching it on FansChoice.tv this past weekend. Yeah, I know. It was a lot of fun. I've actually been out of the seat for um, almost over a year and uh, my little brother's actually out in Portugal, so I plan my trips home accordingly, you know, based on when there's an open seat in a race car, apparently. But, uh, no, it was great. Got to go home, race Meridian Speedway, which is my home track, a little tiny quarter-mile bull ring um, with the Pro Truck Series. Uh, took me a little while to knock that rust off, though, man. I uh, wasn't really sure how it was all going to play out, but uh, fourth seemed to be our number for the weekend. We were fourth in practice, fourth in qualifying, fourth in the heat race, and we do a full field invert. So I uh, started fourth from last uh, going into the 75 lap feature and we went 65 laps green. And let me tell you, when you're out of the seat for a year, I about fell out. Like I was getting ready to call my chiropractor and do some yoga when I got out of that race car. But uh, <laughs> no, it was it was a lot of fun. We got a caution at the very end of the race, which, you know, I, I got to my phone after the race and you were texting me about it. So my spotter got on and said, you didn't come all the way to Idaho for a fourth place finish. And uh, made that last lap pass for third. So it was a great, great opportunity. And actually, it opened up some doors. I get to drive a super late model now out on the West Coast in about a, a month or so. So it's great to be back in a race car, no doubt. 75 laps it seemed long on paper. But during one of the red flags at Daytona that the Cup Series had, you guys ran most of the race in the course of, of the cleanup period for the, for one of the big wrecks while the Cup race was going on in Daytona. Um you mentioned a long green flag run. Uh, were you surprised on how long the green flag run went, being a quarter mile oval, and yet usually we see quite a few yellows on short racetracks like that? Yeah, well, I just got done talking to actually uh, Jonathan Gomez, who ended up winning that race uh, prior to the race, and I was talking to him about you know the competition this year and how everyone's been running because that was a series that I held pretty near and dear to my heart. I did you know did a lot of racing in that series out on the West Coast, and he was like, actually, the racing's been great. Out of, you know, the four or five races we've had so far, we've had two cautions, and most of our races go green. And I was like, dang, that's that's pretty interesting. You know, we run primarily really short, tiny tracks. And, of course, lap four, we have a caution. And I was actually involved in it. I was like, oh, boy, this is not off to a good start. This is going to be a long race. And, uh, man, that was the only caution we had, except for the one with about eight laps to go. And, yeah, I was not mentally or physically prepared for that. So going into the super late model race later um, – later in the year i'm definitely going to be hitting hitting the gym some more and maybe i'll maybe i'll take up the biking like those other you know professional drivers <laughs> whatever they do not, pre <laughs> not prepared but you still come away with a third place effort uh, it was fun to watch over the weekend all right let's talk about some of the action from this past weekend in the world of nascar including the nascar wheel and modify tour race another event that saw just a couple of caution flags and when all was said and done justin bonsignor claimed the win Lapping all but three cars en route to the victory. That uh, that M3 Motorsports team right now on a roll. They're going to be hard to beat this year for the championship, Hannah. Yeah, when we saw Justin Bonsignor win earlier in the year, it was kind of one of those things where we're like, okay, that's a pretty cool breakthrough win. We won't be surprised to see him a couple more times throughout the year, but he's just continued to just dominate. I mean, I think it's going to be extremely hard for anyone to catch him. I, we're still you know, relatively early in the season, if not almost midway, but... Justin Bonsignor has just been, I mean, putting on a clinic in that NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. And you've got kids like Chase Dowling who's there, and he's really knocking on the door for that first win. But Justin, he just, he's just not allowing that door to be cracked all the way open with a dominant team and a dominant car that he's had so far this season. Fourth win of the year in the first seven races. Ryan Priest came home second. 
Doug Kobe was third and the last car on the lead lap. Dave Sapienza fourth. Timmy Salamito rounded out the top five. Uh, finally, a, a good run for Kobe in what has been a very inconsistent season for him. But at, we're at the point now where he's over 70 points behind, I believe, still. 68 or 70 points out. He's going to need guys like Chase Dowling and Justin Bonsignor to stumble for him to catch up and have a shot at another NASCAR Modified Tour Championship. A third-place finish with all the top names surrounding you in the top five is not going to get it done. Yeah, no, it's not. A lot of the, you know, the point system requires consistency, and that's definitely not something that's been in Doug Kobe's corner so far this year. I mean, you've got, you know, Dave Sapienza, you just mentioned, currently running top five in the points over Kobe, his, you know, family-run team like that. Uh, definitely strong for them, but with as dominant as we've seen a couple other drivers, I mean, I hate to call it this early in the in the season, but I think Doug Kobe, you know, might be out for championship contention. The Modifieds next on track, New Hampshire Motor Speedway in just over a week from now. They'll run the all-star race on Friday and then their uh, traditional 100 lap event on Saturday, part of the big uh, quad triple header weekend of NASCAR racing at New Hampshire that also includes the NASCAR Kane and Pro Series East, the NASCAR Xfinity Series, and of course the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. On the show today, third generation driver will join us, just 15 years old, Jagger Jones, who Hannah shocked the late model world uh, just over a week ago at Myrtle Beach Speedway, winning his first night out driving for Junior Motorsports. Now that's uh, a way to impress the boss right there. Yeah, no doubt. I actually wasn't even really watching that Myrtle Beach race until I saw um, Dale Jr. had actually quoted Jagger Jones' tweet. And I know Jagger Jones, the name from, you know, West Coast Racing. I follow a lot of it out at Irwindale Speedway and Havasu and Kern County Raceway Park. So when I had seen that, it uh, definitely captured my attention. And it's so cool to see these young drivers, especially those on the West Coast. And we always joke that there's a serious separation between the drivers on the East and the drivers on the West Coast. So to see a young driver like that make the most of an opportunity to come out here on the East Coast with a team like Junior Motorsports and, you know, Dale Jr. as your boss. Um, good for him. I definitely don't think this is going to be the last time we'll be seeing his name come across, you know, our NASCAR Home Tracks page, capturing a win for Junior Motorsports. Jagger will join us here on the show in a little bit. And buttoning up, racing from last weekend, uh, we talked about the NASCAR Kane and Pro Series uh, and the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour at Riverhead. Uh, the NASCAR Peak Mexico Series, Hannah, back in action with a familiar name in Victory Lane. Yeah, Ruben Garcia, he told me once he got that first win, it may not have been in the Mexico Series this year, but it was definitely his first win in the NASCAR Kane and Pro Series East at Memphis. But the rest just come easy, he keeps telling me. So he actually captured that win down in Mexico, but making left and right hand turns on their road course down there. So it'll be interesting to see him rebound off of not only a Canaan East win, but also that NASCAR Mexico um, series win and see what he can maybe do this weekend up at Thompson. And we'll have a pretty cool throwback paint scheme for the throwback 100 with his rev racing team this Saturday night in that throwback 100 at the Thompson International Speedway for the k and &E Series. We will talk more about that race later in the show, but coming up, 15-year-old Jagger Jones, fresh off a win at Myrtle Beach Speedway. He'll join us after the break. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job. Hard, dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Grunt style. The American fighting spirit is in everything we make. We are 500 patriots and veterans strong bringing clothing manufacturing back to the United States of America. Always moving forward, never retreating, never giving up. We are Grunt Style, and this we'll defend. Get yours at GruntStyle.com. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. Welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. Now joined by 15-year-old third-generation driver that took the late model world by storm just a week ago. 
Jagger, join, J- Jagger Jones, that is, joins us on the guest line. Jagger, welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast, and congratulations on, on the recent win at Myrtle Beach Speedway just over a week ago. Well, thanks for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be on the show. Came into the summer months with just three races for Junior Motorsports, team owned by Dale Earnhardt Jr., and you've certainly made the most of it thus far. Uh, won the first time out, like we said, uh, last week at Myrtle Beach. Has it set in yet that uh, you, you were able to claim the win in, in race number two, feature number two at the Myrtle Beach Speedway, holding off some of their best in Justin Milliken, Sam Yarborough, and Austin McDaniel? Yeah, it's starting to set in for sure. I, I knew I didn't have a lot of races with them, and I was going to have to make the most of of my opportunity. And I, I knew um, the, uh, if I could have done – if I have done well, then – it could mean a lot for my racing career, and I just did everything it took to win. Now, there were two features down at Myrtle Beach, and that second one, from the sounds of it, you started in the back of the field. When you went into the second feature, the one you later on won, did you think you really had a shot at getting there and getting that victory? I really didn't, to be honest, because the first race we had, I got in just a small incident and had a flat tire, and we had to make some repairs to the car. Um, we had to put a new hood on it, and I... I started 17th, and I was just trying to stay out of trouble. That was my only goal, especially for the first 10 laps. It always can be tough starting in the back. A lot can happen. And once we started going, about lap 10, I was already in almost in the top five, and I knew I had a fast car, and I was going to have to make the most of it. Now, Josh Berry has been with Junior Motorsports for several years now and it seems like has countless wins with the team. He was your driving coach last weekend. What was some of the advice that he gave you uh, that you believe might have helped you get that win? Well, he was a really good driver coach to have, and he, he won the last race at Myrtle Beach. So that even that just gave me a lot of confidence as him as my driver coach. So he, he taught me how to get around the track, and he taught me how uh, abrasive the surface, surface is at Myrtle Beach and how much I need to save tires and how important that would be. So Josh was a huge help. Now, obviously, raining from out on that West Coast, uh, Junior Motorsports, a North Carolina-based team. How did it come about to get, you know, those three races, considering Junior Motorsports has a pretty full lineup this year? Um, how did these three races come about, and how was that connection made? Um, we started talking to them in the winter um, through uh, Jimmy Johnson. He's helped me with my racing career a little bit, so... We started talking to Junior Motorsports, and they said they were pretty much mostly full for the year, and they'd only have a couple races. And we just we said, all right, we'll do as many races as we can with you guys. So, and then we we planned those three races in the summer. Not a bad couple of names to be associated with. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jimmy Johnson. Uh, not bad at all. You mentioned you're, you're, there's only a couple of events left for you guys. When are those races uh, here over the course of the next couple of months? The I'll be racing um, at South Boston the last weekend of July, and then I'll be racing the first weekend of September in at Hickory. Hickory, obviously a uh, racetrack out here in North Carolina with a lot of history, uh, junior motorsports, lots of success there. But I want to take a second and go back over to your West Coast. You've had a lot of success there this year so far. Five wins, including wins at Kern County Raceway Park in Bakersfield and also out in Havasu. Um, you're right there close on that NASCAR championship for the state of California, but you're a couple points out from Lawless Allen, who's currently leading it. Um, how focused are you guys on this championship, and are you really um, narrowed in on it this early in the season? Yeah, for sure. The championship, um, the ones at the track, the track championships and the state championship, are we all are looking at them, but... For me, I definitely want to win those championships, but I'm also focusing a lot on just winning races right now. And every weekend when I go to the track, that's my main goal is is to win the race. And I think the points will play out for themselves if we can do that. Now, your grandfather is Parnelli Jones, your dad, P.J. Jones, both a a lot of experience and success there in, in the open wheel side of things and in sports cars and road course racing. What brought you down the stock car racing path? Well, I started racing in go-karts on road courses for about since I was nine for about five years, and I even raced over in Europe. And I definitely was 
favoring more toward the the formula open wheel uh, road course racing. And then my my dad, since he raced a lot of stock car and NASCAR stuff, he wanted to just let me try everything and really figure out what I liked the best. So I started racing. A, he put me in a legend car for a couple races in, in Las Vegas, and I really liked the oval racing and how how you can run a 40 laps side by side with another car and you can really make a difference with your driving so i i really liked the oval and i wanted to then i started to like the nascar out and we put me in a late model last year and i really liked it so i'm pretty set on the nascar out now i have to ask i've actually been in a couple twitter conversations about this we always talk about you know the unique names that are currently out racing in the West Coast, Lawless Allen and Jagger Jones. Like that is that just sounds like it should be in a really cool stock car movie somewhere. Did you get the name Jagger from anywhere specific or did your parents just know that they were gonna, you know, raise a race car driver that needed a cool racing name? Yeah, my parents always say when your last name is Jones, you have to have a pretty pretty cool first name. <laughs> so um, and a lot of people ask if I'm named after Mick Jagger and my parents say I'm not and I might not be named after them, but I'm, they had to get the idea from that. <laughs> it, uh, it no doubt stands out in the results uh, every week uh, when we uh, look at the West Coast results. Hannah mentioned a moment ago West Coast Racing and your West Coast Late Model. Is there much of a difference between what you're used to out uh, back at home in, in Vegas and, and on the West Coast or compared to your East Coast Late Model that you're driving for Junior Motorsports? Um, there's not a huge difference, which was uh, which helped me for sure get comfortable in the car fast when I went to North and South Carolina. But for me, the biggest uh, difference was the tires. I'm used to running on a, a narrower treaded tire versus a wider slick tire. So that was really the biggest difference. And also the competition side of things are a lot different. Like on the West Coast, we don't have we have good competition, but we might not have as many. Um, competitive cars every single weekend where uh, when i went to myrtle beach there was at least 10 cars that could win the race that could win the race now one of the cars that you do drive if i am not mistaken is also out of the same camp that we saw trevor huddleston um race out of is that correct yes trevor's my teammate perfect now trevor made a pretty good run last year for that national points championship for the nascar wheel and all-american series uh, coming up close to Lee Pulliam, who ended up capturing another national points championship. Has Trevor been someone that you've been able to lean on as you, you know, you're know you chasing down tracks like Havasu and Kern that he's seen a lot of success on, as well as racing, racing on a national level? Yeah, for sure. Trevor's been a big help, especially last year when I first started racing late models. And it's cool to be able to go every weekend and one of your biggest competitors is your teammate and still have a be able to race clean and fairly with him so it's been he's been a help for sure and i'm still racing against him this year and we've been doing well as teammates we're wrapping up this conversation with 15 year old jagger jones who's joining us here on the show fresh off a win with junior motorsports uh, just over a week ago at myrtle beach speedway want to wrap this up by taking us back to the beginning obviously we've talked about your family and the long history in motorsports, what is your earliest memory of going to the racetrack with them? Well, I I really always grew up at the racetrack, so I don't really remember a, a first certain race at a racetrack. I just remember that's all when I was little. That was all I really knew because I was always at the track with my dad and my grandpa. So I there was my mom didn't want me to be a race car driver, but there was no other. She didn't, there was no chance I wasn't going to be just the way I grew up. All right. Uh, well, obviously, uh, growing up at the racetrack has paid off here with your driving career. Uh, even though it's against mom's early wishes, I'm sure she's happy with seeing all the success now. Jagger, thanks for joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Best of luck to you the rest of the year. Hopefully, we'll be talking more about you and, and the Junior Motorsports team in Victory Lane by the end of the summer. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on the show. 
All right, 15-year-old Jagger Jones joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Coming up, we'll wrap up this week's show with a preview of the Throwback 100 for the NASCAR Kane and Pro Series East cars this coming weekend at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. MRN's Throwback Thursday, the greatest races in NASCAR history. Richard Petty goes back in front. They both spin. They're in the wall. Petty is sliding. Pearson is still running. As they come to the stripe, the winner is car number 21. They spin. They go into the outside wall. Earnhardt hits the wall, Rudd hits the wall, and scooting through is Jeff Bodine, and he is going to win the Holly Farms 400 here this afternoon. Thursdays at 1 on MRN.com, on demand on iTunes and Google Play. Throwback Thursday on MRN.com. On the racetrack, you can only go as far as your engine can take you. It's the same on the highway. Making a run with a Detroit engine under the hood gives you the industry-leading fuel economy, reliability, and durability your business needs. The Detroit DD13, DD15, and DD16 engine solutions are specifically engineered to make a run as profitable as possible. Don't just want better business solutions. Demand them. Learn more at DemandDetroit.com. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. Wrapping up another edition of NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. And Hannah, we talked about it in our opening segment, the, the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour. Uh, Doug Kobe finished a season best third at Riverhead last Saturday. Wasn't sure about the point standing. 79 points between himself and Justin Bonsignor. Looked it up uh, just a moment ago, but still a long way to go for Doug as they get set forward in New Hampshire this week as he looks for what is sixth NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour Championship in a team that has been unstoppable the last couple of years. Yeah, Doug Kobe, I mean, like you said, it's a pretty large point gap for him to be able to really make a run for that championship uh, chase, but... New Hampshire has the potential to really shake some things up. You've got that shootout race. But New Hampshire is a track that maybe a lot of the drivers that are currently running are a little bit more um, fresh on. You've got, you know, your Ryan Priest and your Doug Kobe and drivers like that that have more experience compared to some of the younger and more rookie drivers in the series. So this could be something that could allow for Doug to really close on that points gap. But, man, with Bontenor being so dominant, you know he's going to be a contender at New Hampshire. And with a good run for him, that's only just going to extend his points lead. And the thing with New Hampshire is you get a big car count. Uh, there's usually 35, 36 cars that start that event. So a bad day there is a really bad day. It's not like you're going to walk away with a 22nd or a 24th place finish, but you're going to walk away with a 36th place finish. And that's actually what took Justin Bonsignor out of the championship battle a couple of years ago when he had a motor issue in that event. Unable to win the championship, Doug Kobe passes him, goes on to win the title. Chase Dowling also very much a part of the battle in the Modifieds. But uh, speaking of Chase, he'll be racing in Teddy Marsh's uh, NASCAR Canaan Pro Series car this coming Saturday night in the Throwback 100 for the NASCAR Canaan Pro Series or uh, what some are calling the NASCAR Bush North Series because a lot of the paint schemes that are being used for Saturday night's race date back to when that series was known as the NASCAR Bush North Series back in the late 80s, early, I guess right through the 1990s and into the early 2000s. Uh, you were at Thompson uh, back earlier this year, Hannah. Uh, should be a great race. The K&N cars always put on a good race when they go to the high bank 5 ace mile oval. Yeah, Thompson is such a phenomenal facility. I mean, everything from their garages that they have that are, I mean, awesome for these K&N teams and modified teams, as well as the fans that show up. They had a great crowd when I was there earlier for the icebreaker this year. Um, so it's it's always great to see the Kane and series go back there, get that exposure at such an awesome facility. It makes it easy for the teams to want to travel up there as well. But um, you'd mentioned Chase Dowling in a stock car, so that'll be that'll be super cool to watch. Um, obviously, a shoe and a modified, but you ask anyone, uh, priest included, the modifieds are so different compared to a stock car, let alone a Kane and car. They're such heavy. We call them taxi cab racing, is what we always used to joke about. They're just real heavy on the wheel and you have to throw these race cars around because you don't have the horsepower weight ratio that you really want in comparison to these modifieds in the tires so um i think it'll be cool i'm excited to actually know that chase is racing that now definitely keep an eye on that and see where he ends up but um a contender all around i think even in a and n car but the modifieds i mean he we're gonna see him in victory lane this year at some point in the nascar wheel and modified tour because he's just so consistent and he's 
um, been there so many times. Going to run for the championship, no doubt, and look for a win in, in the K&N car this Saturday night. Some of those other throwback paint schemes have been released thus far, including three from Rev Racing. Chase Cabry will sport the 1980s Levi Garrett paint scheme that Jeff Bodine raced in the Cup Series. Ryan Vargas will sport a blue and white scheme used by Tommy Ellis in the old NASCAR Bush Series. And uh, we talked about Ruben Garcia Jr. at the beginning of the show, winning down in Mexico this past weekend. He will race a scheme used by NASCAR Mexico Series driver Ruben Pardo several years ago. Brandon McReynolds will also be there, and he'll race a 1980s paint scheme used by short track ace Cookie Visconti. And Spencer Davis will run the number 13 in the series and will run in the honor of the late Ted Christopher with a black and silver color scheme. Uh, it's going to be a great show, Hannah. So much excitement around this event for the second year in a row. Won by a year ago, a year ago by Harrison Burton. Todd Gilliland was second. They won't be entered. Well, Her uh, Todd won't be entered this weekend, but uh, it kind of opens the door for a new winner this Saturday night. Yeah, a new winner is uh, definitely an option, but I think we're going to probably see a pretty good handful of the same contenders, including that DGR Crosley stall. They have just been um, so dominant in the Kane and Pro Series East, but MDM Motorsports is obviously always a threat when it comes to going anywhere in the K&N Pro Series. Anthony Alfredo, actually, I saw his throwback scheme as well earlier this week. He is doing a Sterling Marlin throwback to that silver bullet, that number 40 um, MDM card. You know, it's it'll be one to recognize. You've got those those really pretty mountains that are going to be on there. But obviously, Anthony, still underage, is not sporting any um, alcohol uh, sponsors. <laughs> but no, still a beautiful car. But I think it's going to really come down to these MDM DGR guys when it comes to the championship. They're just so consistent, so dominant. You've got Chris Lawson, who's crewing on Tyler Dipple's team. They've just been killing the game. Um, but I would love to see, you know, you throw in Brandon McReynolds and Chase Dowling. You're going to have a really good show this weekend up at Thompson for that throwback race. And the schemes, they're just gonna so good cool. Looking, gonna, yeah. Going to be a good-looking field, uh, no doubt, uh, as these paint schemes continue to be unveiled over the course of the week leading into the event. Switching gears now before we wrap up today, the NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series national standings. Philip Morris continues the lead, but here come the modified drivers, and we knew, Hannah, this was going to happen as the modified seasons, which start late, kind of got up and rolling, and drivers got races and points under their belt. You knew they'd be a factor. Burt Myers up to second with all of his success at Bowman Gray Stadium. Keith Rocco up to third with everything that he's had going on at the, the, the uh, Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park, winning three races there. And the four races at Stafford might be tough this year for Phillip to hold off these modified boys that currently hold second, third, fourth, and fifth in the national standings right now. Yeah, the thing Philip Morris really has going for him as far as this uh – you know, his points lead in the NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series Division One is he's been traveling. I mean, if you look at the tracks that he's gone to, he's got Myrtle Beach, he's got South Boston, Langley, Southern National, Dominion. So, I mean, right there is five, six options that he can go to every single weekend where you turn around and look at, you know, your modified guys. They've got one, two, maybe three tracks. They're bouncing back and forth. So um, when it comes to the option of being able to run, Philip Morris has so many more tracks, but the points calculation is a really funny thing based on, you know, car counts and competition and where you start and points. So it really is a calculated thing. But, I mean, they're really going to give Philip Morris a run for his money. He's been so strong, but when it comes down to it, I would, wouldn't be surprised if we see these modified guys really, you know, get up there with Philip Morris. But, you know, you've got Jagger Jones, who we just had on the show, currently seventh in national points, also touring in a late model. So... Uh, it's going to be a great chase for the championship this year for that NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series national points. Jonathan Brown and Jason Myers, also competitors at Bowman Gray Stadium, uh, round out the top five in the Division I national standings. That'll do it for this show, Hannah. Any uh, big weekend plans for you as far as the short track world is concerned? There is not, actually. I am not going to a racetrack this weekend. I say that now, but I generally always <laughs> end up at one anyways. But, uh, nope, this is my... My off weekend before I kick into a couple months actually straight of whether it be touring with NASCAR home tracks with the K&N Pro Series East and West or, you know, I'll be at Mid-Ohio and Iowa with you guys. So uh, looking forward to maybe one last little weekend off, spend some time on the lake and then, you know, head to some more short tracks. Enjoy the lake. I will be thinking of you from Kentucky <laughs> Speedway where I'm sure it will be 130 degrees this yeah, weekend. Yeah, give Jesse Little a hello for me. He's making his NASCAR uh, Monster Energy Cup Series debut 
this weekend for premium. So cool to see another home track short track racer uh, get there up there in the ranks. So um, give that, that, say Jesse Little to my <laughs> That announcement just coming out here uh, just within the last 24 hours. Jesse Little making his cup debut. Another one of those K&N drivers making his way up the ranks. want to thank Jagger Jones for joining us on the show today. For producers Craig Moore and Brian Yesowich, for Hannah Newhouse back in Concord, I'm Kyle Rickey. We'll see you back here next week on NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. NASCAR Coast to Coast has been brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. NASCAR Coast to Coast can be found on demand at MRN.com, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and SoundCloud. NASCAR Coast to Coast is a production of the Motor Racing Network. Network. All rights reserved.